welcome i am joy pink girl teaches and i want to thank you for pressing play and taking some time out of your day to spend with me time is such a precious commodity we never get time back and so i thank you for taking some time for me I would like to extend a warm welcome to the new subscribers. I thank you so much for choosing to be part of this community. And it's my sincere hope that here you will find a message that encourages you, that you will find a community that supports and edifies you as you continue on your journey. To all the returning subscribers, welcome back and thank you for being part of this community. When narcissistic parents infantilize their children, they do this in order to maintain their power and control over their child or children's lives. This is simply the act of prolonging the infant stage in a person by treating them as an infant. They do not see their child's age. They do this to make the child feel incompetent. Each time the child tries something new, they try to take over it or just remind the child that they cannot do that even though the child can clearly do it themselves this is something that they never stop doing even as the child becomes an adult you see it's the child's independence that threatens the narcissist all they see is their supply fading away it is always about the needs of the narcissist the narcissist remains true to form and views their child as an extension of themselves. And so as this child grows and becomes more independent, the narcissistic parent will guilt trip them, control them, they'll employ fear tactics and any and all manipulation tactics from their toolbox. As the child becomes a teenager, they naturally want to spread their wings a little more and the narcissistic parent is threatened by this. They will undermine and criticize the child's abilities. They do this through devaluation and they treat their teenager like a toddler. And sadly, this carries on into adulthood. You see, the narcissistic parent will, exp um, they will express displeasure at their adult children. Sometimes it's as though or sometimes it's through a particular look. They may just look at them and, you know, in a way that says that I'm very displeased with what you are doing. And it's that look that speaks a thousand words. The look that expresses just how much of a failure the child is in their parents' eyes. This is manipulation. They question the choices of their adult children. The narcissistic parent will be dissatisfied when they are not consulted before any decision is made. They feel like they have to give their input in everything, whether it is starting a new job, where to go to college, where to work, who to date, who to marry, where to live, how many children to have, who you should be friends with, what trends should you be following, how should you dress. And this is done simply so that the adult child will get into the habit of seeking approval for, for their every decision. And that, that is simply to feed into the narcissistic parent's need. They need narcissistic supply. It reinforces the notion that the adult child cannot trust themselves. You know, a lot of times when children are raised by narcissists, they are not allowed to see themselves. They're never validated. And so that in turn makes them, um, in some instances, they're, you know, they just feel unseen or they don't trust their own decision making. And this is what the narcissistic parent is trying to do even as they're an adult, to remind them that you cannot make this decision by yourself. And if you don't seek me to help you make this decision, you'll end up in failure. They have no limits. They will just say everything. So they'll continue to reinforce the false belief that the, the, that the adult, I got tongue twisted, that the adult child cannot trust themselves to make a decision. And this causes them to have a difficult time with trusting. They doubt whether they are capable of doing anything. Can they perform this job? Can they do this task? Can they make the right decision on who to marry, on where to live? 
it just brings everything that they do into question. It brings everything that they want to do into question. And even when they want to break away from their narcissistic parents, because they've been programmed to not believe in themselves, they've been told over time that you are incapable without me, they become fearful. How will I manage financially? Yes, I have a job, but how do I balance my books? Because the narcissistic parent sees their adult children as an extension to themselves, and so they in interject themselves in the lives of the adult children. They want to make sure that every decision about what they do gets their approval first. And should this child not seek the parent's advice? Oh, wow. They become explosive and the child is subjected to narcissistic rage. There will be um, smear campaigns. The flying monkeys will have a lot to say to de further devalue this child. And then they sometimes find themselves on time out. They get to experience the silent treatment. And oftentimes they be, they're the ones who go back to try to create peace with their narcissistic parent. And these same parents are known to sabotage their children, their adult children's relationship. They're so pathetic. They destroy their adult children's self-confidence and conceal their actions by acting as though they're just helping. And they're helping where they were not asked. They devalue their children by making cruel comments about their looks, their weight, their clothing styles, their lifestyle choices, and how they choose to raise their own children. It does not stop with just their child. They begin to try to dominate or control how grandchildren are raised, what they wear, how their hair is done, who they play with, where they go to school, which club will they be part of. Many of these children don't realize how severe the enmeshment is until they really become adults. And it's important that if you are one of these um, one of these children who have experienced this with your parents, it's very important that you learn how to set boundaries and share only what you need to with them. Nothing more, nothing less. One of your boundaries could look like um, how much time you choose to spend with them and how do you break up that time? Are you going to give them one hour throughout the week or are you going to break that one hour? You know, there's several ways that you can give them the time. But even when you are with them, be careful of what you say. Go gray rock. Only tell them what they need to know. The more information that you give them, the more ammunition that you give them that they will use at a later date. The more that you speak and share your life, the more you open yourself up for criticism. So prepare yourself, have some responses on hand so that when they begin to attack you or begin to do the thing that they do, you can disarm them. Oh, thanks for your opinion, but I already made my decision. Oh, I can do this. I don't need your help. You're being direct and straight to the point. Remain firm and do not doubt yourself. You are simply denying them continued power and control over you. You are not an infant. You are an adult. Some are even parents. Remember, there is no arguing with them, so disengage. Sometimes you'll find that the parent will say, Oh my, you look terrible today. Disengage them. Oh, I know. I don't look my best. And leave it there. That's it. Disengage. Sometimes you'll find that you have to walk out. And when you're starting off like this, when you are learning how to put boundaries with your parents in place, it will feel weird. And even when you don't trust yourself, just remember that, you know, it's, it's a journey. It starts with one step. And it's like working out a muscle, you know. You don't just go into the gym and all of a sudden have all these gains. It takes time to develop. And that's what it's going to be like to trust yourself. So the more you practice, the more you go into the gym and work that muscle group out, the more you continue to exert yourself and speak up for yourself and honor your boundaries, the easier it will become over time. And the more you, as you gain 
more um, control over your life as you cut them out or you take away their control, you will be able to find more parts of yourself and trust yourself as you continue to journey on because you're doing the work. So I just wanted to share this message to encourage anybody who is experiencing this with their parents that listen, this is your life. You have one life to live and it is not for you to turn over into the hands of somebody else who has already lived their life. So until the next video, take care of yourself and take care of each other.